正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 138. Snatch. As luck would have it, this prince also want. Everyone seated were initially smiling, but after a few more smiles, they were unable to continue smiling. Huang Fu Hao stared at Prince Ru Ai's eyes, and even Fu Ziyu Yi unexpectedly looked at him. While Princess Mingyun's facial expression froze and her mood was instantly distorted, it was the Crown Prince that laughed and smoothed things over. A elegant and virtuous maiden, a gentleman's desire. Young Lady Shen has both looks and talents. Naturally, she would attract countless of heroes. Everyone then followed and nodded their heads. Prince Ru Ai picked up the wine cup that was placed down with a smile, yet not a smile. And did not speak any more. Everyone all thought that he merely jested and said a joke, because not for anything else. But how would Prince Ru Ai from the Great Liang be able to marry a daughter of an official of Ming Chi? Not to mention these two persons were not well matched. Now under such sensitive and tense circumstances, by marrying a young lady from another country was like entering a trap that makes one uneasy. Who knew if that young lady was a spy that was sent by the other country? And no matter how courageous one was, no one would dare to take this risk. Everyone continued to laugh, drink, and eat. But after Prince Ru Ai said those words, Princess Ming and had fallen into a state of resentment that even her gaze was filled with hatred, and even Huang Fu Hao was frowning at it. Speaking of which, the banquet that the Crown Prince hosted was fairly satisfactory. As the princes of Mingqi most likely wanted to find out the attitude of the Ken country and the Great Liang towards Mingqi, until now the Ken country had been very intimate with the Mingqi and did not have any intention to be enemies. However, it was Prince Ru Ai, hailing from the Great Liang, that was neither cold nor warm. One could saw that it was not close nor hostile, and it made one feel elusive. Even during toasting, when everyone was tipsy and merry. He made others frustrated as he was not drunk and his mind was clear. Thus, there was no slip up in his words at all. At the end of it, Prince Ru Ai was also the first to leave. Because of him leaving the banquet, Princess Ming An's mood became even worse. On the way back, Princess Ming An had punished several servants, and even Prince Ding's subordinates that were on official business were also cursed by her. Those two people were not others but Zi Chang Wu and Zi Chang Zhao. Fu Ziyu Yi scolded them some more before Princess Ming and let it go. After returning to Prince Ding's residence, Fu Ziyu Yi had told his aides about what had happened at the banquet today and pondered that Prince Ru Ai of the Great Liang seemed to be hostile to this prince. And deliberately oppressed during the banquet, Fu Ziyu Yi was able to attract a group of capable people. And as a prince, other than being able to forbear, his schemes might not be the highness, but his ability to recruit talent and perseverance were something that no one among the nine princes was able to compete with him. He could spend days facing another's wooden door and wait, and each time he waits, it would be an entire night. And he also planned a stable and prosperous future for the entire life of that person's family. Thus, all the aides that followed him were talented and also loyal to him. Once there was any problems, he was able to get the answer from the aides' mouth. As for the ability to manage people, it was what an emperor should learn to do. At this point, Fu Ziyu Yi was indeed an outstanding emperor. Each one of the aides were deep in thoughts. As Fu Ziyu Yi looked at the plainly clad male right in front and said, "What is gentleman Pei's thoughts of it?" If one were to saw that every aide here was Fu Ziyu Yi's trusted people, then Pei Lang was definitely considered to be Fu Ziyu Yi's confidant. Pei Lang was recruited by Fu Ziyu Yi two years ago. At that time, Pei Lang's talent caught Fu Ziyu Yi's eyes. But Pei Lang was one who had no greed for power, and Fu Ziyu Yi at the end. Had to spend a lot of effort in reasoning before Pei Lang finally moved. After all the twists and turns, the person did not disappoint Fu Ziyu Yi, and within the two years, he helped Fu Ziyu Yi solve many problems. Therefore, up to now, whenever he meet with an unsolvable problem, Fu Ziyu Yi would often thought about Pei Lang. Pei Lang frowned. Did your highness crossed paths in any way with Prince Ru Ai previously? Fu Ziyu Yi shook his head. This is strange. Then, Pei Lang analyzed. 
Prince Ruai is a representative of the Great Liang and should not only focus heavily on your highness. If there was no intersection previously, there would not be any reason to put your highness in a difficult position. Your highness did not block his route, and even if the Great Liang want to make things difficult for the Ming Chi, the person he would be looking at is his majesty or the crown prince. Fu Ziyu Yi nodded his head, this is also what I had thought. Perhaps. He pondered, perhaps it was because of Shen Miao. What does your highness words mean? Another aide questioned. I was thinking that in those words that Prince Ru I said, only Shen Miao was related to me. It is just that at that time I was unsure if he was joking or doing it intentionally and only felt that Shen Miao and him did not have any relations. But the now thinking about it, one feel a little strange. There was an aide that said, could it be that Prince Ruai and Shen Miao have some unspeakable secret relationship? Pei Liang said flatly, this is impossible. Everyone all looked at him. Pei Liang's words were very convincing, and what he said in front of Fu Ziyu Yi would always become true at the end. No matter how others were convinced, they would always concede to his conjecture. It is Prince Ru Ai's first time in Mingqi, and Shen Miao followed Shen Xin's return to the capital not too long ago. There was absolutely not possibility for them to have any contact. Even if it was after this, Pei Lang cupped his hands and said, Your Highness is being well aware that Prince Ru Ai is not a person that is easy to deal with after having contact with him a number of times. Since the Great Liang sent him over to Mingqi, Prince Ruai is bound to be one who knows how to weigh the advantages and disadvantages. In such a short time, it is not of his interest to be hostile with your highness just because of a female like Shen Miao. Hearing that Fu Ziyu Yi amused, your words made sense. Accordingly with Gentleman Pei's perspective, what should be done? Since your highness has not be implicated much today, if one were to act rashly, it would make Prince Zhu and the rest to be wary and alarmed. Ever since the tribute banquet, Prince Ru I had never mentioned the matter of leaving, so there must be something else that he needs to be done in the Ding capital. Currently the Qin country is still present so one need not fear. Why not just wait and observe to see what kind of game that Prince Ru I is playing? before making a decision. Pei Liang said it convincingly. Fu Ziyu Yi nodded his head, in that case then follow what gentleman Pei said. He pressed his forehead, one had had more drinks today and it would be a long court tomorrow morning. I will rest first and everyone can disperse. After Fu Ziyu Yi left, the aides in the hall also scattered in twos and threes. No one was with Pei Ling because Pei Ling was originally alone and was also very trusted by Fu Ziyu Yi. Thus many would be jealous and no one would make friends with him. Pei Liang walked out and was entranced as he looked up at the stars in the skies. Two years. It had been two years. He had followed the agreement with that young female and finally became Fu Ziyu Yi's confidant. Living comfortable like this, he had gained Fu Ziyu Yi's trust with his resourcefulness, and everything was done so naturally that at times Pei Liang would think that this should be his entire life. However Shen Miao's reappearance broke the illusion. From the beginning Pei Liang knew that by making this transaction with Shen Miao, it was akin to making a deal with the devil. From the moment he got closer to Fu Ziyu Yi, there would be a day, just like now, that he would become the spy that he initially did not want to be. Fu Ziyu Yi treated him very well, but he was a person who would betray right from the very beginning. Pei Liang sighed deeply. The comfortable days were over and from now onwards, the road that he needs to walk would always be like today, filled with trembling fear and if one was not careful, that one will fall into the abyss and there would not be any room left for redemption. Xin Miao, the purple-clad young female's delicate and pretty face appeared in front of Pei Liang's eyes. It was already so challenging for him as a man, how could a young female who schemed behind the scenes be able to shoulder on everything? This was something that he would never understand in his entire life. Under the light of the oil lamp, Shen Miao was carefully writing. The snow white paper was spread out, and Gu Yu was grinding the stone ink while Jing's carefully added some oil onto the lamp, as the light was not bright enough. She was writing very seriously but from time to time. She would pause midway to think for a while before continuing writing. After finishing writing on the entire paper, 
Everything outside was quiet. Shen Miao put the brush aside and picked up the paper to blow. After ensuring that all the ink on the paper was dry, she then found an envelope to put the letter in, before handing it to Jing's. Early tomorrow morning, go out and find someone reliable and send this letter over to Chang Zai King in the Shen residence. Must guard against others and not let it fall into the hands of others. It must only be in the hands of Chang Zai King. Shen Miao said, Jing Zhen complied as she kept the letter properly. Although she was confused why would Shen Miao be writing a letter to Chang Zai King, but she did not ask. Gu Yu started to gather the paper and ink on the table before smiling. It is better for young lady to rest early. It is already late at night and if one were to rest later, it would not be good for health. Shen Miao nodded her head. After Jing Zhen and Gu Yu left, she took the lamp and brought it to the small stool near the bed, but sat on the side of the bed lost in thought. After having such a dream like last night, now she was unable to sleep and she was thinking about it the entire day. It was as if she had glimpsed to an inkling of the past life. She finally knew how did Chang Zai King was able to easily turn Lu Zhu Yan into a wisp of a spirit. It was Shen Miao herself that gave the sucker to the enemy. If one were to say that Chang Zai King was the main culprit, then she would be executioner that was used by others. Upon remembering this, Hate that could topple mountains and overturn seas came pouring in. Shen Miao hated that she was unable to swallow Chang Zai King whole. However, now she had to think of ways to let Chang Zai King's reputation be swept away, and it was just overly simple. Chang Zai King constantly thought of living her life in inexhaustible wealth and status for her entire life, so why not let Chang Zai King gain everything she want first? before bursting the bubble and let her be laughed at by the whole world. By using Chang Zai King to deal with Chen Rikayu, perhaps it was enough to save her some some effort, making the best use of everything. The lesson from that phrase was already carved into her bones, and this time Shen Miao is to play the game of killing others through the hands of another. She had spent the whole day and at the end managed to come out with something. On that piece of paper, it was all filled densely with Shen Wan's preferences. Being the niece of Shen Wan for so many years and because she sincerely respected Shen Wan, Shen Miao had a lot of knowledge as she had done a lot of things when she was young to please this third shoe. Now all these knowledge was given to others with both ends and means, and it was to an ambitious female. Shen Miao did not believe that with Chang Zai King's many methods, this hypocritical gentleman Shen Wen would not fall into the trap. The gentleman had intention and the concubine had feelings. On the surface it was a match of talents, but on the inside they were all wolves and leopards, all not a good thing. Thus the tearing up in the future would be even more interesting. A trace of sneer appeared in Shen Miao's eyes. It was always fun to watch dogs biting dogs. She took off her outer garments and went up to the bed and just as she was about to lay down, she unexpectedly looked over at the window. The windows were tightly shut and the breeze outside was swaying. There was no one else in the dark and deep night. Shin Miao was startled a bit and scolded herself in her heart. Why did she suddenly look at the window without any rhyme or reason? It was like she was somewhat not used to Zi Jing Xing not appearing. She shook her head and pressed that weird feeling in her heart before blowing the oil lamp off and finally went to sleep. In the residence of Prince Ruai, someone was in the courtyard feeding the tiger. The white tiger was filled with joy in the courtyard as it nestled at the feet of the youth, and from time to time it would stretch her head out to eat from the hands of the latter. Perhaps because of the joy of eating and also being taken care of extremely well, the fur that was covering the white tiger was shiny and bright and she has gotten so fat that she now looked like a beautiful big cat. Do not feed anymore. Feeding like this would make her truly become a cat and with such conduct like this, how would there be an appearance of a tiger? Jiao Yang was looking at the side and poured cold water all over. Zi Jing Xing turned a deaf ear to it, and continued feeding the white tiger as he casually said, I am the one pampering. You have an opinion? Jiao Yang choked before raising his hand. All right, all right, all right. I do not care if you are feeding a cat or feeding a tiger. What exactly happened in the East Palace, aka Crown Prince's Palace, today that you put Prince Ding in a difficult position without rhyme or reason? With Fu Ziyu Yi's type of person, 
he would certainly have some suspicion of you right now. It is somewhat wrong to beat the grass and scare the snake. What exactly are you thinking? When the matters of the palace reached Jia Aoyang's ears, he dare not believe it at first. Zi Jingxing had his own thoughts when he did his things, but it was not a good time to go against Fu Ziyu Yi right now. Fu Ziyu Yi had some methods privately and even though it would not hurt Zi Jingxing, it would bring Zi Jingxing additional trouble and currently flaws were not tolerated. Seeing that Zi Jingxing was not even paying attention to him, Zhao Yang's thoughts spinned, it cannot be because of Shen Miao. Zi Jingxing said, you are very free. What is the matter of the Su family settled? Zi Jingxing questioned. Zhao Yan was surprised before replying, had already instructed others to do it. However, he paused before continuing. Is there any meaning to do all this? Although you and Su Ming Feng are good friends but when the day comes where he know your true identity, he would definitely be enemies with you. At that time everything that you had done would be plotting in his eyes and it better not doing anything. Why is there even a need? Emperor Wen Hua had the mind to suppress the Su family, that even if the Su family was willing to give up on influence, there was some residue left and these residue would likely become the reason of the Su family's death. Zi Jingxing let Zhe Aoyang take action and secretly clean up all the residuals of the Su family, so that in the future the Su family need not do anything. Zhao Yang did not express an opinion on Zi Jingxing's action. Currently Zi Jingxing was wearing a mask so no one knew he was Prince Ru Ai but if one day this came to light, it was alright to oppose to death about it. But Su Ming Feng would definitely be able to recognize him. Brothers that accompanied one another throughout childhood but now was deceiving the other. Moreover the Great Liang and the Ming Qi would eventually one day be hostile with one another. Zi Jingxing can protect the Su family but still be unable to protect Su Ming Feng's past. This was an unavoidable fact. For the things I do, why is there the need to consider his thoughts? Zi Jingxing said, it is just because I want to do it. Is it truly so? Zhao Yang said in a rare sharpness, perhaps you had forgotten that currently you are not the same as before. With this identity, it is fated that there would not be any trustable person in the Ming Qi. Upon removing the mask, others would only look at you vigilantly. This official would caution as a subordinate that nothing can stay so hidden your highness. The night breeze was blowing gently as the white tiger was full from eating and gave a yawn before holding Zi Jingxing's sleeves in its mouth. The entire courtyard was filled with the silence of the wind. Not long after Zi Jingxing said, it is not, not everyone, there is one that is different. He said, a person that one can use the identity of Prince Ru Ai of the Great Liang to make friends. You are talking about Shen Miao? Zhao Yang reminded. Your Highness must not forget that currently Shen Miao's friendship with Your Highness is only because she also wants to deal with Prince Ding, Fu Ziyu Yi. Your Highness can help her but there would be a day that when it comes to it, she would still stand on the opposite side of Your Highness. To be cast aside by everyone under the skies. Did not Your Highness plan for it from the beginning? If it was only a temporary indulgence, once one wake up from the dream, what will be left would only be traumas. So what about it? Zhao Yang was surprised for a moment. Zi Jingxing asked a question in reply. So what about it? He picked the white tiger from the ground and hugged it. Upon standing up, his slender, tall and straight figure was like a pine tree in the night. There is a price to pay for everything in the world. He said, be it be power or people, it is all the same. If it comes to that day, this prince will think of ways to snatch. The country need to be snatched. The imperial throne need to be taken by force. Female need to be fought over and hearts need to be grabbed. From the beginning this road was already set. How could one not able to bear this little thing of the hate of the world? It is better for you to return to the Great Liang earlier. This prince have have forgotten the road one will walk on. On the contrary, this prince knows exactly what one wants. So. Do not doubt this prince's decision. If everything is just a dream then one only need to make the dream a reality. He said it plainly but there were no doubts when he spoke. This prince has this confidence. Zhao Yang, do you doubt? Many years later when Zhao Yang think about this winter night, he could still felt the boiling blood in his bones. He had seen that person being arrogant and naughty in his youth. 
But in a flash it seemed that many moons had passed, and he had saw the overbearingness and majesty of a true imperial family. If everything is just a dream then one only need to make the dream a reality. How many people in this world would say such words? But against expectations, Xi Jingxing said them. Zhao Yang paused and a moment later, he bent his knees and gave the other a greeting that one gave to a monarch. This official vow to follow your highness to death. Raise up. Xi Jingxing was teasing the white tiger in his embrace. Zhao Yang patted the dust on his knees and thought for a little before asking solemnly, Then, how does your highness plan to snatch young lady Shen over? Xi Jingxing said, Get out. After entering early winter, the days passed by exceptionally fast. However it seemed that everyone was busy and nothing new happened in the Ding capital. If one were to speak about something new, it would be the matter in the Shen residence. After Chen Rikayu had conversed with Shen Wen on that day, she was determined to marry Shen Yu off. She brought Shen Yu to the furens of different families all day. Shen Yu was tens of thousands times not willing, and after she was punished by Shen Wen to stay in the ancestral hall once, she dared not do it again. Shen Yu was a delicate character and could not endure any suffering, thus she could only obediently follow Chen Rikayu to meet those furens. Even though Chen Rikayu wanted to marry Shen Yu off, she also doted on her daughter so she was very careful in picking. Although Shen Wan was a shrewd person, he had more humanity than Shen Gui. Shen Yu was the bright pearl in his palm. Thus other than the compatibility in terms of household and also that they are able to provide Shen Yu with brocade to wear and exquisite food to eat, those males of the family filtered were indeed very good youths in the Ding capital, and did not have a bunch of messy concubines in their courtyard. This was also owed to Shen Yu's talented reputation, as it was often easy for a talented and refined young lady to gain others' favor. Because of worrying all day about Shen Yu's stuff, Chen Rikayu had ignored Shen Wan for a bit. And one did not know from when onwards, Chang Zai King had become Shen Wan's confidant. After Shen Wan came back from court, he would talk to Chen Rikayu about difficult problems, but now that Chen Rikayu put no more effort to relieve him of it, Chang Zai King became the receiving end from Shen Wan. Not only that, Chang Zai King would often help Shen Wan dispel the clouds to see the sun. One did not know why. But Chang Zai King had the exactly same hobbies and habits as Shen Wan. For example Shen Wan did not like sweet things and the cakes that Chang Zai King made were not very sweet. Shen Wan liked fragrant tea and most of the tea that Chang Zai King made were mostly fragrant tea. Even their most admired painters were the same. People tend to be a little closer to those who are similar to themselves. Thus Shen Wan felt that Chang Zai King was able to hit off with him like kindred spirits. After being accustomed to Chen Rikayu's gentleness and aloofness, Chang Zai King's intelligence and frankness were like a light breeze that made Shen Wan's heart stir up after a long time. It was just that all of this was not known to Chen Rikayu. Naturally Chen Rikayu would not know of it. Chang Zai King's methods were very high level and she would not take the initiative to look for Shen Wan as it was Shen Wan who took the initiative to look for Chang Zai King. Moreover when the both of them were together, they would be far apart from another, showing an appearance filled with etiquette. It was just words that were spoken thus even if others were to see it, they would not think more, much less go and warn Chen Rikayu. It was this case for Chen Rikayu's end. And there was another incredible thing. It was that the third young lady of the Shen residence suddenly became very close with Shen Yu. Even though there were only these two young ladies in the Shen residence, but Shen Yu was just like Chen Rikayu, and would somewhat look down on those who were of lower status than them, not to mention a Shu daughter who crawled out from an Yi Niang's womb. There were no interactions for all the past years, so it was indeed a suspicious matter when they became close sisters without any rhyme and reason. In Kai Yun Yu on of the Shen residence, Shen Dong Ling pushed the plate of cake to Shen Yu and smiled, this is the freshly made snacks that the kitchen sent over. Milk and sweet scented Osmanthus was added. Have a taste second older sister. Shen Yu saw the snacks and did not reach out to take it but instead sighed somewhat irritatingly. How would I still have the mood to eat? I am full with anger. Shen Dong Ling looked at her and said worriedly, 
Is second older sister still distressed about the matter of your marriage? You do not know. Shen Yu snapped, Yesterday I went to the residence of the Minister of Land and my mother was extremely satisfied with that gentleman Wang. If I did not guess incorrectly, she have the idea of marrying me to gentleman Wang. Now I cannot even eat as I am so anxious that my head hurts. Minister of Land. Shen Dongling said curiously, is it that gentleman by the name of Wang Bai? You actually also know about him? Shen Yu looked suspiciously at her. Heard father talking once about it. Shen Dongling smiled shyly. Shen Gui was also an official and would indeed know about the Wang family matters. Shen Yu followed along, yes, it is him. One heard that this gentleman Wang's learning is profound and immense, and currently had entered officialdom. Even though currently he is not successful in his official career, but it was the matter of time for him to reach a pinnacle of virtue and ability. Second older sister, this is a good thing, so why are you not willing? Shen Dongling asked, No matter how he is exaggerated or hyped up, I will not like him at all. Shen Yu snapped, When I marry, it must be to one who has unlimited grandness. What is he? When Shen Dongling heard this, she probed, Could it be that second older sister has someone in her heart? Shen Yu was surprised for a moment before covering up, Number. What nonsense are you talking about? Shen Dongling smiled in apology. I had thought that gentleman Wang type of person was considered not bad. But if second older sister did not like, could it be that one had someone in the heart, thus no one else was acceptable? It was me who misunderstand second older sister. Second older sister, please do not be annoyed with me. Shen Yu waved her hands but her gaze was somewhat preoccupied. She thought about Fu Zayu Yi and her heart could not help but feel pain. Chen Rikayu had told her that Fu Zayu Yi want to marry someone that was able to help him. She was just a daughter of an ordinary civil official so Fu Zayu Yi would not marry her. But Shen Yu could not help but think that if one day Fu Zayu Yi fell in love with her, Perhaps he would not care about all the other things and treat her well. She was this pretty and smart, and her reputation of a talented female was spread throughout the Ding capital, so naturally she also want to marry a peerless noble male. In the entire Mingqi, only Fu Zayu Yi could enter her eyes. She had guarded herself for Fu Zayu Yi for so long, and now she was to marry to another. Of course Shen Yu was totally not willing. Shen Yu heard Shen Dongling soft words, why second older sister not try? Perhaps gentleman Wang is not as bad as you thought. Moreover the Wang family has a compatible family status with the Shen family. Speaking of it, gentleman Wang is also a good person so when second older sister marry over, there would not be any grievances and live ones live safe and securely. Is it not good? The more she said that the more fed up Shen Yu felt. What Shen Yu wanted was never stability but glory. The envious gazes from everyone and this was something only Fu Zayu Yi was able to give her. Second older sister must not think too much. This kind of blessing is one that others cannot get no matter how one beg. Just like me. Shen Dongling said. If the position was changed and it was me standing in second older sister position, one would definitely not refuse such a thing and on the contrary would be very happy. Is not a female wish to have security? Shen Yu was originally somewhat irritated when she was listening but after hearing to the ending part, she could not help but pause. A strange feeling slowly floated up to her heart, and she could not help but look at Shen Dongling. Shen Dongling's chin was pointed and it made her look particularly weak, as if she did not have the ability to resist and would be very docile. There was also a look of trust in her brows, as if she really treated Shen Yu as a true sister. Really seemed to be a person that could be manipulated. Slowly a thought floated into Shen Yu's heart, 